Hi everyone, I'm Craig and welcome back to the Grow Paradise Garden and Plant Nursery, specifically in our tropical style patio project, because in this space I want to explain to you five reasons that I think you should be adding boring garden plants into the mix to improve your tropical style garden. Now I get it. It can be tempting to constantly challenge yourself and we all love a challenge and every single hobby comes with the temptation to get the rarest or most desirable item added to your collection and plants is a hobby and gardening is a hobby that is especially like that. I'm tempted on auction sites like eBay when those unicorn plants come up you want to add it to your collection to challenge yourself to push the boundaries. I'm not saying don't challenge yourself. I love to grow the truly tropical plants and the rare plants, but why not add some easier plants into the mix? And in this video, I'm gonna talk through five reasons that this year I think our patio project and other parts of the tropical style garden are looking the best they ever have because we are growing more boring plants in amongst those rarities and those special tropical style plants. So what would be my first reason for adding some of these boring plants to your tropical style garden? Number one is growing season. So many of us who grow tropical style plants and tropical style gardens that don't have a tropical climate really feel that the growing season can be quite short, especially with unpredictable weather. If spring arrives late and summer's not as warm as we had hoped, the plants are slow to get going. And so many of them, like cannas and colocasias, um, either take a long time to get that big foliage or they don't flower early enough in the year for us to enjoy them. So by adding plants into the mix that are boring and more readily available, it's adding color and interest for a much longer period of the season. Now this part, of the Grow Paradise Patio project has been in bloom for, I'm gonna say six to eight weeks already, which is adding so much color, so much earlier than this garden has ever had color before. Now in front of me is Geranium Roseanne. It's a very, very popular plant and rightly so. And these plants, like I say, have been left here from when this was my wife's cottage garden area. And I'm glad I'm really, really glad that she's persuaded me to keep them because it's stitching all of the tropical style plants together really, really well. Now, beside that is a beautiful fuchsia and we can't remember the name of this one, but we bought it on a visit to Hampton Court Palace Flower Show. And I really enjoy adding plants to the garden that have memories tied to them. So I'm glad that we've kept that. And we've gone for a pink and purple theme here because we had the pink rose that's trained across the wall there, Rosa um, Aloha which is a really, really nice pink rose. It's flowered over a long period, probably the earliest flowering plant in our garden. They thrive in the heavy clay soil. These bulk standard plants have really, really pushed that growing season and these are all repeat flowering. So they are going to flower all the way through summer and autumn and allowing the rest of the plants to get going while the garden's already looking great. And that brings me on to point number two, growing boring plants means that they're going to be flowering over a longer period in the season which brings in more pollinating insects you're going to be supporting the wildlife far much more than you would be if you're just growing a garden that takes such a long time to come into flower so mix these in amongst your cannas your brugmansia um, your banana plants and you're going to bring wildlife in and the whole space is going to feel much richer and you're going to be sharing it with the birds the bees and butterflies and helping them out that brings me on to point number three, hardiness. Plants like this geranium and the fuchsia are completely hardy and that's why they've become popular, boring plants. They're easy to grow. They just go dormant in winter and they bounce back bigger and better every single spring. Now, I love growing tropical style plants and I accept that some of them are gonna need a bit of extra protection. Um, that's part of the style that I love and part of the challenge, but why not make life just that little bit easier and be able to enjoy the garden for that bit longer by growing some of these hardier plants. And this sort of leads on to point four, ease. These plants are readily available. You don't need to source out the specialist nurseries. You can walk into a garden center, see what's looking good early in the year and use it to fill some of the gaps in your garden and leave space for where the tropicals are going to go that you're nursing on in the greenhouse, perhaps in your conservatory, shed or porch, utilizing whatever space you've got. You can leave those spaces but give the garden a head start with those plants that you can purchase easily somewhere local to you. 
And that brings me on to point five, which is cost. All of us like to save a bit of money, especially if we can find a bargain. And some of these boring garden plants that we can add into our tropical gardens are very, very cost effective and easily propagated through division. A lot of these herbaceous perennials, you just split them in autumn or spring and you can multiply them and spread them around the garden. So it saves a bit of money, um, money that you could possibly put towards that plant that you've been looking for, that special kind of showcase plant that you want to add to the garden because you filled in other parts of the garden with these reliable cost effective plants. I'm not saying completely give up on challenging yourself or trying to grow that plant that you've really been looking for. I'm still doing it. This Musa is a rare banana that I grew from seed. It's Musa chismanii, and I'm experimenting to see how hard it is. I'm leaving it outside. Behind that is probably one of the most desirable plants for tropical style gardens at the moment. It's Brassiopsis mitis, another hardy plant, um, but extremely hard to come by. Um, I'd call it one of those unicorn plants that everybody's looking for. So I'm still growing these plants, but I'm enriching our outdoor space for those five reasons with plants that people call boring. Um, and I don't think they deserve that name anymore. I'm on a gardening journey. We all learn new things and I can see now why these plants become so popular, why all of the garden centers have them and why it's such a common plant in gardens. They've earned that spot. Perhaps try adding some to yours. Let me show you closer up how I've mixed some of the rarer plants, the tropical plants, in with these boring plants in this area in the Grow Paradise Garden. So this part of the garden is what we've been calling this year the Paradise Patio Project and it's a mix of those tender tropical style plants and those hardier boring plants that you find more readily available. And I'm going to show you a closer look of how we've been mixing them together. So this I'm going to say stunning geranium is geranium roseanne. It's a plant that goes completely dormant in winter, it bounces back in spring and it recovers really, really quickly and it's fit the brief. It's giving us those bright purple flowers. The pollinators absolutely love it. You can probably hear a bee flying around now. And we've combined that with that fuchsia. Like I say, I can't remember the name of this one, but it's got the memories from our trip to Hampton Court Palace Flower Show. It was the first flower show I've ever been to, the only one actually, I need to try and get to more. And it's got almost a metallic pinky purple sheen on the bell coming out there with the recurved petals. I really like it and it's bringing in a lot of pollinating insects. Again, completely hardy and it flowers throughout the season. So it's really enriching this space. So what exotics have I tied in with these plants? So down here is a plant that's tender. It needs protection. It's a bit slower getting going. So it's kind of at the sidelines of the stage at the moment while the geranium and the fuchsia are doing their thing and doing it really well. This is Tibishina ervilliana and it has stunning purple flowers that will complement this geranium really, really well. And it's just growing out from a pot here. We grow it in a container so it's really, really easy to overwinter. And I've just tucked it under these reliable long period flowering plants and this should be in flower soon. And I can't wait to see how that combines. Then just behind the fuchsia is an impatiens, a tropical impatiens from Madagascar. This is impatiens tuberosa. And again, this is a repeat flowering plant. I've grown this from cuttings. It flowers throughout the season, but it's a bit slow to get going because it needs that extra heat. Now, this impatiens, unlike most, is much more sun tolerant um, Empatiens oricoma cross bicordata is another Madagascan hybrid that we grow and sell. It's an orange flowering one and they're really, really good, but the orange one wilts in sun and this one is doing well and it's got these really tropical looking flowers. But look how that is now uplifted by what people would call boring plants around it. I think they're really adding to the space. Now behind that is another truly tropical plant from Brazil. This is the Brazilian plume flower, Justicia carnea. And at the moment it has, because it's been plunge planted into this bed because it's tender and it needs winter protection, it's recovered. It's produced loads of these beautiful lush green leaves with that dark purple underside. And I'm pleased to say that it is budding up now. Now this produces stunning pink flowers. The carnea part of its name actually means flesh. So it's flesh colored flowers. 
and I was getting worried that it was going to grow up too tall underneath that magnolia and we wouldn't see the flowers, but it's doing it at just the right height. So blending in some of those rarer or more difficult to grow tropicals with these reliable plants is really helping to create a long growing season and each plant's going to come into its own and it won't be long before we're seeing those tropical Brazilian flowers besides this mass of flowers down at this level and it's really helping to tie it together. Now other plants that we grow that are truly tropical and need a bit of heat to get going are things like the Brugmansia. Now these are looking a bit tatty because we've had a couple of wet days so the snails have mobilized. They flowered once in spring and they'll probably do it again in autumn and they need lots of feeding and care to get them to do that. So I'm so grateful that we do have these hardy flowering plants to keep things moving along. Now, obviously, it's not just hardy plants that flower nonstop. There are uh, slightly more half hardy or tender plants that you can grow, like this. This is a Butylon Aphrodite. It's a cultivar that has these intense magenta flowers, and Abutilons will flower and flower and flower all season long. And they are half hardy, they will take kind of minus five, as so long as they're kept quite dry. They like good drainage. I think I've shown you, we've grown a butylon apple seen before, which is this orange flowering one. And we've got a red flowering one that's growing quite tall now. Uh, this is a butylon lily. It's just a case of finding plants that really enrich the space and tying it in because the cannas, which are down at the front there, have been very, very slow this year. The collocasias that we have in this tray over here, which is full of water, because you can grow them as aquatic plants. They've been very, very slow because the weather is unpredictable. You can't guarantee that you're gonna get the heat when you need it. And I'm so pleased that we've just enriched it the way we have. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only person that's decided to mix in some of those reliable, boring plants with my tropical style garden. So I'd love to hear about the plants that you're growing in yours. Either leave a comment below, or if you wanna share pictures to inspire everybody and showcase your hard work, join our free growers forum at growparadise.social where there is a community of people all around the world helping share their passion for plants. Now, if you found the video useful, please hit subscribe. It's the easiest way to support the channel. And if you're in the UK, feel free to check out our plant shop at growparadise.co.uk. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.